Antelope Freeway, one mile. Antelope Freeway, one half mile. Antelope Freeway, one quarter mile. Antelope Freeway, one eighth mile. Antelope Freeway, one sixteenth mile. Antelope Freeway, one thirty second mile. Antelope Freeway, one sixty fourth mile. Antelope Freeway, one one hundred twenty eighth mile. Antelope Freeway, one two hundred fifty six mile. Antelope Freeway, one five hundred twelve mile. We've just passed Antelope Freeway. This is Dale Matthews. I run a successful little website called badcounty.com where we keep track of local politics and Josephine County government officials. I've been doing this for a decade, but our website videos are new. We'll hit 86,000 views as of this weekend. That's more than the three television stations, the two newspapers, and the radio stations combined. BadCounty.com is a non-commercial website, and it's linked in with our non-commercial newspaper, First Friday. That's been in distribution monthly since 2006. We usually print stories a month or two before the Not-So-Daily Courier. Their issue of this Friday, May 9th, is typical. We released the first story I'll talk about over a month ago. By the way, exclusive means we're the only ones reporting the story for a whole month. April 4th, exclusive story in First Friday. I have it here in my hand. Sheriff accuses Simon Hare of dishonesty and budget manipulation in attempt to force levy vote. And so this goes back to the Ivy Neighborhood Watch meeting of April 1st. Sheriff Gil Gilbertson got up and he said, we were going for a levy at the time, and one of the commissioners said, Sheriff, I want you to get rid of patrols. Well, I almost fell out of my chair, because that's our number one job. When someone calls for help, we go. We respond. Whether we arrest somebody or not is secondary. But somebody's got to come when you call for help. So this commissioner knew I had $500,000 and about five deputies per patrol. These were his words. I'm going to take $500,000 from you. I'm going to give it to the district attorney and juvenile justice. That'll make the people vote yes. After they vote yes, I'll give you that money back. But don't tell the public I said this. Well, I asked him from the audience. That was Simon Hare, wasn't it? The person that asked him to remove that $500,000 so people would vote for the levy? Well, Gilbertson didn't want to answer that question, but it was asked again by Mark Witchers, who's running for county commissioner, and he confirmed, yes, that's true. So, this story was not covered by the Daily Courier. It wasn't on Kjo. It's not been in any of the television stations. Finally, today, May 9th, a month after we released the story, you can see it in the Not-So-Daily Courier. My point is, once the sheriff announced at this meeting in the Illinois Valley that Simon Hare had tempted him, had said, now look, you know, take the $500,000 out and this will help this thing pass, why did the sheriff keep quiet about that? Why did it take the sheriff a whole year, now that he's running for office, to announce to anybody that this happened? And then so I asked him in a subsequent meeting, and this you won't find in the Courier or any other place, well, doesn't that implicate you then in a scheme to defraud the public of which you said nothing about for a whole year? The sheriff's answer was, well, that's kind of twisted. No, that's kind of being honest. So we have another story in First Friday, and it's also from the April 4th issue. And it's also an exclusive story. It means you won't find it anywhere else. And it's called, You Can Find Explicit Porn on the Library's Computers in Only 30 Seconds and Kids Can Too. So what had happened in this case is at the weekly business session held by the county commissioners on April 2nd, a citizen, Judy Aaron, said that she was concerned that people say that you can go to the public library, especially one in downtown Grants Pass, and that you can access pornography on the library's computers. Well, the response from Cheryl Walker, 
the chairperson of the Board of County Commissioners was, oh, these citizens, you know, they come up here and they say these things, and then, well, I'll just want to assure everybody, our children are not accessing pornography, and you can rest assured that you're safe, no one's accessing any kind of pornographic material on the library's computers. Now, it's strange to me that K. Joe had a person right there at that meeting, and the Daily Courier is involved in listening to these meetings and being there in the room during these meetings. So, what am I, the only journalist in the room? As soon as the meeting was over, I went to the library, and I have a card, and I said, may I, you know, access the computers? Yes, yes, feel free. So I made sure that there was nobody around me that was going to be scandalized by this. And I opened up Google. I did a Google image search. And within 30 seconds, I was looking at full-on pornography inside the library. Again, being careful that nobody was going to be looking over my shoulder. I, you know, I don't want to expose anybody to that. So I popped a little thumb drive in there, and I captured the images to prove that what I'd seen was true. Now, these were full-on pornographic images of men and women having sex, men and men having sex, animals involved. No problem. Anything that you want to see, you can see on the library's computers. So I blanked out the screen, and I went and I found the top librarian that I could find there, and I brought her over and I explained what was there so that I said, do you want to see and confirm this for yourself? Well, okay. So I called it up and she went, oh, well, okay. So I said, so what's the deal here? You know, the commissioner had said, absolutely not. There's no way. Nobody's doing this. And the librarian said to me, well, yeah, this does happen. Uh, people can come in and do that. It, it happens all the time. It happens all the time? Really? At the library? And I said, well, what about kids? Oh, yeah, they know what to do. Well, the truth is they do know what to do. But at the library? There was a fellow there that was collecting signatures to put the library levy, library taxing district, on the next ballot, the ballot that's going to be in November, not this May ballot. And I talked to him briefly about this, and he said, well, it's freedom of speech for kids. Thing is, while I was there, I made one last stop at NAMBLA. That's the North American Man-Boy Love Association. It's a group of pederasts and pedophiles who believe that men, fully grown men, should be allowed to have sex with young boys, and there were pictures. Should it be available at the library? And a bigger question is, when a citizen comes to county commissioners and says, I'm concerned about this issue, is it a really good idea just to laugh at them, to make fun of that citizen? Every once in a while, a citizen may actually come up with a good idea that's worth listening to. And it might be a good idea for Cheryl Walker of the Board of County Commissioners not to be so quick to dismiss citizens who have said, look, I've got a concern about something. And, of course, there was no apology. As if that isn't enough, here's another exclusive story in the same issue, the April 4th issue of First Friday. This one's called, According to the Federal Register, BLM is considering closing Table Rock. Really? Well, this story has still not been in the Daily Courier. It's not been in the newspaper in Medford. It's not been on the TV stations in Medford, all three of them. It's not been in any media that I've seen here locally at all. Well, are you maybe a little bit concerned that BLM is considering closing Table Rock? Here's the paragraph that caught my eye from the Federal Register. The temporary restrictions, and they're already in place, are there to protect cultural, historical, wildlife, and botanical resources on newly acquired and existing public lands within the Table Rocks management area until they can be inventoried and the BLM can consider a permanent closure through the land use plan amendment process. So here are the restrictions. One, you must not discharge firearms gas or air-powered weapons or simulated weapons, including paintball and paintball-like weapons, from or across BLM lands. Okay. Number two, 
you must not use motorized vehicles or non-motorized mechanized vehicles that are propelled or powered by any means outside of trailhead parking areas. Let's suppose that you had someone come back from military service. They've been in Iraq, and they've had their legs blown off. Well, doesn't this mean, I mean, it says non-motorized vehicles. Doesn't it mean, then, that you won't be able to take a wheelchair up there to Table Rock? You're not going to be allowed to do that? I'm not quite sure exactly what it means, but it's worth looking into. Is that really what it means? So our wilderness areas are only accessible by people who are physically fit? Really? Are we going to say no to people when it violates the Americans with Disabilities Act? No, we can't allow you to do that. Well, some people who go up to a place like Table Rock, they might be just a little bit older than we are. You can't bring dogs, okay, or any other animals. Well, according to this, not even your pet gerbil or fluffy your cat in your arms. And you can't use metal detectors. You can't scrape anything, disturb anything, remove natural land features for a purpose. I'm not suggesting that there's anything wrong with, with any or all of these rules. But would it be a nice idea if our local media, other local media, at least picked up on this story? You'll only find it in First Friday and listed in the videos on badcounty.com. Here's the fourth of five exclusive stories. Exclusive, they're only appearing in First Friday. Executive Compensation Board members quit in protest over inflated salaries of top officials. So there's something called the Elected Officials Compensation Committee, or board. And these are people that consider how should elected officials in Josephine County be paid? How do you compare and contrast their salaries with those of people in other places? Now, last year I went to their meeting and I videotaped it and I put the video up for you to see at badcounty.com. And one of the questions I asked is, you're really going to compare Josephine County's elected official salaries with those of other places based only on population? Why aren't they based on our economic conditions in this area? Oh, no, no, we can't compare them with economic conditions. No, wait a minute. If you're going to compare solely by population, I understand that the city of Beverly Hills is not a county, but the city of Beverly Hills has almost exactly the same population, to use that as a comparator, as Josephine County. Now, as it turns out, these elected officials in Josephine County are making more money individually than the average family in Beverly Hills. So, is it proper to use only population as the way to figure out how much people should be paid as elected officials? So what happened to that executive compensation board? Well, after that meeting, they all quit. They all quit? Yeah, every one of them left. Well, one of them, oh, gee, I think I've got to wash my hair. And another one, well, I think I want to spend more time with my family. I've talked with two of them. And they said that the reason that they left was they don't like being restricted by this. They think that the elected officials' salaries should be tied in with the average incomes in this area, which means they'd be making quite a bit less. They all quit. As brave a stand as that may be, as symbolic as that may be, how much good is that going to do them if no local media, except for us, even tell anybody about it? Oh, I'm going to take a symbolic stand, but nobody reports it? Well, you're crying in the darkness. You're, you're taking an individual stand, and nobody notices. And so, why isn't this in the Daily Courier? Why wasn't this reported on KJO? Well, you already know the answer to that question. Why am I asking you? So our fifth exclusive story is actually done by my cat Jack. He's a little cartoon character that I have in every issue of First Friday since 2006. And he makes little wry comments about the news. And this one, I'm going to read it word for word because it's not very long. Josephine County Chief Financial Officer Rosemary Paget is finally leaving her position as of June 30th. 
This is cause for celebration because she's been at the center of nearly all of our financial misadventures for nearly a decade. For example, Paget claimed that a volunteer forensic examination of irregularities concerning fleet vehicles cost the county government $10,000 to accomplish. Asked how volunteers with no budget could cost anything, she insisted that multiple department heads were forced to defend practices such as switching license plates just before the investigators arrived. I was one of those investigators. I know that to be true. When embarrassed by such indefensible assertions, Paget insisted that she had no personal role in the summary until her signature on the documents was pointed out. Two people will replace her and still save the county $50,000. So every year for nearly a decade, the county commissioners have said, oh, we couldn't possibly cut one more person or all the services would suffer. And then they cut another person. Well, how's that possible that you cut another person? Remember, we were at bare bones. There's no possible way anyone could be cut. Well, we did it. So now we're really at bare bones. And then the next year, I'm not making this up, the next year, oh, look, we found we were able to cut two more people. So now we're really, really at a bare bones budget. Hmm. Okay. About the third or fourth time that happened, how is this possible that they're still able to make cuts when they're at the barest of bare bones budgets and they can't possibly spare any more people? It starts making you doubt when they tell you that. So now we hear that Rosemary Paget, the chief financial officer for the county, is leaving, and she's assured everybody, don't worry about it, because we've got a good person to replace me. In fact, we're even going to add in another person behind that. And what's more, this transition will be smooth. Not a single beat will be missed. Everything's going to be great. It's going to be the same service that we've had before, and we'll save $50,000. Um, now, wait a minute. Let's see if I got this straight. For nine years, with this chief financial officer, we've been spending $50,000 a year, more than we needed to, because don't forget now, everything's going to be the same as before. 50,000 times nine is $450,000. We could have accomplished the same things and saved nearly half a million dollars? That's one heck of a CFO. The chief financial officer is leaving, and we're going to save all that money, and we're going to get the same exact services as before? Well, for a chief financial officer to keep telling us we're at bare bones, apparently we weren't. We were spending $50,000 every year too much. As Dwight Ellis, the former chairman of the Board of County Commissioner, pointed out, he said, well, this chief financial officer that we have, Rosemary Paget, is the best chief financial officer in the entire world. Well, tonight there's a chief financial officer in China that's crying her eyes out. She thought she was the best in the world. Where can you get a copy of First Friday newspaper? You can find that posted at badcounty.com. It's a non-commercial website. It's a non-commercial newspaper. I'm not trying to sell you anything. But, you know, you can always go to the Daily Courier, and you can get your news a month or two months late, but it will be filtered by the Daily Courier and sanitized for your protection. We've just passed Antelope Freeway. 